All right, this is the week nine press conference with defensive coordinator inside linebackers coach Peter Sermon prior to Saturday's game against number 24 USC. We will go ahead and get started with questions. Um, we'll go to Jeff Ferrado from Cal Sports Support first. Go ahead, Jeff. How you doing, Peter? Good afternoon, Jeff. Can you talk uh, just what you see in the USC offense? Um, <clears throat> they have uh, haven't been quite as explosive maybe the last week or two, but overall, you know, just how difficult they are to defend and, and uh, your impressions, of course, of uh, the Heisman Trophy winner. Well, they're exceptionally talented uh, at all the skill positions. Uh, you know, they do a really nice job of distributing the ball, uh, you know, building some formations that uh, – uh, that kind of undress some coverages so they can get a good picture of what you're doing. Um, but, you know, it all it all starts with a quarterback position. Uh, it looks like uh, Caleb Williams and, and uh, the offensive coaching staff and, and uh, Coach Riley are really uh, in sync with one another. Uh, and they do a nice job of, of getting the ball to really dynamic playmakers and, and creating space for them. Justin was asked on the previous call whether Caleb Williams is the best college quarterback he's ever faced and he was struggling to think of somebody who was better um, and I'm wondering in your time coaching defense uh, have you come across anybody who compares? Well I had the opportunity to, to practice against him uh, when I was at Louisville. Uh, Lamar Jackson was a pretty dynamic uh, college player and he's a pretty dynamic uh, uh, NFL player that uh, you know he threw a, a, a very accurate ball, mm -hmm. had great ball uh, velocity was extremely tough to tackle, uh, you know. So those those types of guys, uh, you know, have been out there, and and uh, you know, Caleb Williams is is definitely one of those guys that uh, the entire conference has a hard time tackling. Uh, he's extremely uh, accurate with his throws. He has some of those throws. Um, you know, he threw a ball against us last year, coming to our sidelines, a comeback. Uh, he escaped the pocket and and threw about a 35 yard rope. Uh, on our sidelines, and it's one of those on the headset. It was complete silence. Like that kid just made that throw, and uh, you know that's that's what uh, that's what he's capable of doing. So, if I can follow up, um, you guys obviously you're not playing as well on that side of the ball as you're accustomed to, and as, as well as, as I'm sure you want to be playing. What what were you able to do last week in practice to adjust that, tweak that? Um, your depth chart looks pretty much the same, so. You're going with your guys, but what are you gonna? What can you do to make it better? Yeah, I think we have to continue to uh, to work on the fundamentals of, of what we need to do on defense. Uh, we need to do a better job. Uh, the first thing, you know, is we haven't done, uh, we haven't been efficient enough uh, of getting people uh, behind the chains, uh, negative plays. Uh, we've had a hard time sacking the quarterback the last four weeks. I think the last five weeks, I think we have one recorded sack, and that goes all the way back to to maybe. Uh, uh, game two or three. Uh, so we have to do a better job of affecting the quarterback. Um, and then, you know, we do have opportunities to, to sack the quarterback. Um, you know, we, we have to get them on the ground. It's, it's uh, when you're not playing well, sometimes you have a tendency of making things more complicated than they are. Um, but when you have to strip things back on defense, uh, we'll never hold the pin last on defense. Okay. And, and we we're comfortable understanding that. Uh, we're going to have to play formations. We're going to play what the offense, uh, you know, provides us. Uh, mm -hmm. But when we have the opportunity, when the ball's in the air, uh, we need to knock the the ball down. Uh, you know, we can't, it can't be a, a five step throw, plant off your back foot and throw it over our heads and, and not not have contested throws. And then we have opportunities to get free runners of the quarterback. We have to we have to get the the guy on the ground if. Uh, you know, we want to play good defense. If you don't play good defense, then then you're not going to do those things. So we need to improve on those areas. USC has given up quite a few sacks the past two games. There are two defeats to Notre Dame and Utah. Is there anything you see when you watch the tape that applies to what you guys can do? Yeah, you know, teams are, uh, you know, are going after them. Uh, and and not, not in the sense of, of you know, bringing uh, five, six, seven guys a lot of the time, but... Uh, they're rushing the quarterback. Uh, they're they're doing a good job of collectively rushing them together. Looks like they have a plan um, on how they're doing it. And then uh, you know in the back end, guys are are you know trying to be competitive with with the wide receivers. And and uh, you know I think that that combination is you know again it's it's not that it's not that hard. Um, but you know to be able to do it, it's not easy either. 
So it's it's guys are, are playing hard. They're you know the last couple of weeks they've created some takeaways. Uh, you know, so those are those are a big part of it, and and uh, you know the guys up front, you know Notre Dame and Utah, uh, they're both pretty gosh darn good defenses. They got guys up front that can rush the quarterback, and if they do win, they have the ability to get them on the ground. And uh, you know, I think both teams did a nice job of of uh, you know staying attached in coverage and and uh, forcing some challenging throws. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Matt Moreno from Rivals. Morning, Coach. Um, Morning. You know, is there any particular challenge or maybe even an advantage of going against a team that's had some struggles? You know, uh, or is that something you, more that we look at in terms of, hey, there's a team struggling, you guys are get, maybe getting them at the right time? Yeah, you know, Matt, I don't know if there's a, a, a right time or a wrong time to get a team. Uh, USC is uh, is healthy, um, and uh, that's that's what we're concerned about is, is the skill level they're bringing, um, you know, challenging our defense. They have playmakers all over the field, so – I don't I don't get too wrapped up in uh, you know the I guess the uh, when we get to play them uh, more as you know what we have to do from the defensive side of the the ball with you know what they're uh, what they show on offense and, and the skill that they're going to bring into uh, our place. Next question I've got from Thomas Dunn from Right for California. Uh, good morning, Peter. Good morning. Uh, when it comes to the uh, inside linebacker group, and obviously with the injury to Jackson, how is it uh, crucial for the de development for someone like Kate Uluwabe, who's going from the physicality of a Utah team that likes to run it down people's throats to a USC team where Caleb Williams basically has to be spied on every single play? How uh, how much does that foster development and essentially being thrown in the fire for such a young linebacker? Well, I mean, you bring up a good point. Uh, it's you know, it's it's what what you have to do on defense to really develop uh, younger players, and you know, you're doing a really good job of pointing out the 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 differences of you know one offense to the next, and that's really uh, apparent throughout the conference. And defensively, uh, there has to be a, a foundation, there has to be a baseline of instruction to start from uh, that has to be able to. Uh, you know, kind of live with some durability. Uh, you know, we lose, we use that term a lot. Uh, you know, in our defensive staff, when we put new things in uh, or new concepts in, they have to be durable. And what I mean by that is they have to be able to to exist versus different styles of play. Uh, they have to have answers versus the run game, the throw game. Uh, you know, the the empties, uh, FIB formation of the boundary, what we call the deads which are unbalanced or all eligibles on one side. They have to have the durability. Uh, and the foundation of those calls and the foundation of the techniques have to have durability as well. Uh, so you don't have the opportunity to learn uh, you know, the new foundational techniques or new uh, alignments from week to week. Uh, that would stunt uh, the development of any player, much less a player with, uh, you know, with limited experience. So you know, what, what you're doing on defense for us is we're always trying to continue to grow and develop. Uh, that durability, so we can play against uh, all the different uh, variety of offenses we have. Uh, you know, Cade is a good example of a guy that's having an opportunity to to get in there and and, and mix it up a little bit. I think he has good tools. Uh, he runs well. Uh, he's relatively inexperienced. Uh, he missed the majority of his senior year uh, due to injury. So the last time he played as much as he is was a junior in high school. So uh, you know, there's the 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 development of just a playing ball. And then there's the, you know, kind of getting back into uh, getting the opportunity to play more. So uh, we're excited about what, what he is going to be in the future. But, you know, there's a lot of guys that have some opportunity now to, to play more. And uh, I would expect to see quite a few guys rolling through at inside linebacker on uh, Saturday afternoon. Thank you. All right, we'll go back to Matt Moreno. Uh, maybe on that note, obviously, a bye week gives you a chance to kind of reevaluate some things. How much is there going to be, or should we anticipate maybe some personnel changes, or maybe even differences in what you guys try and do defensively, scheme wise? Well, I don't know that the uh, the week really provided a, a lot of uh, different answers in terms of personnel. Uh, I think we have a good understanding uh, of what our guys are. Uh, it didn't take a week of reflection to to understand what our strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, we will always continue to look to develop guys and find roles for guys that, that can help us, that have shown they can do certain things. Uh, but, you know, we spend so much time with this roster that there's not a ton of unknowns. Uh, so the, the bye week is more about, you know, can we hone in on, hey, this guy can give us, uh, give us some help in certain situations, or, hey, this is a player that we need, uh, you know, to continue to get some more reps and invest in. Uh, but there's, 
you know, there's rarely in college football wholesale uh, personnel changes. It's just not, you know, it's just not uh, typically an environment that that happens too often because you get into the season and the, and the guys that are maybe twos and threes aren't getting the amount of reps to really see a, a, a maturation unless there's some injuries that, that require uh, those guys to get some uh, new reps. So, uh, you know, we'll continue to, to, to work as many guys in that we think can, can help us can help us win and and uh, you know we still got a lot of a season left and and uh, guys need to continue to develop um, and when their opportunities uh, present themselves they need to go out there and make some plays.